It's a road well traveled, but this time it doesn't look the same. Well, I know where I am, I know where I'm going, but you know, all well, these houses that I, you know, I drove by and nothing. Paradise is almost unrecognizable for Phil Binstock. The streets, the landmarks, the memories, all gone after November 8th. I've never been in a war zone, but that's what I would imagine a war zone to, to be. He remembers driving this way a few days after the campfire to look for his father, Julian. Dad was one of two people they could not account for initially. On the way back up to his father's, the questions fill his mind. What if, what could have been done? and why. The first thing that struck me, besides the obvious devastation, was the complete silence. No birds, no animals, no people, no cars, no nothing. It was the most eerie silence. This is, yeah. We arrive where his father, Julian Binstock, lived. Feather Canyon Retirement Community. This now empty lot was his home. This is what's left of my father's house. Everything cleared, a bird feeder that made it through the fire, empty. I can't believe they cleaned everything up. Just, this is not what I'd expected. I don't know what I expected, but uh, it's really kind of eerie to be here, to see all these trees that burned. This was the, the inferno. And yet today, with this beautiful weather, it's just... There's something uncanny about it. It's not what he remembers. This was his home, right here. As you walk in, you walk into the living room, you go straight to the dining room. To the right was the kitchen, and then to the right was the uh, door to the garage. The garage was right here. Phil tried to get a hold of his father. Phone calls made to the retirement community went to voicemail. The lines just rang within seconds engulfed the entire house. Phil never heard from his dad. He visited every single evacuation center for weeks to try to find him. He made flyers, he posted on Facebook. His family didn't give up hope until an investigator asked Phil for a DNA sample saying a body had been found. It took about two weeks to get the DNA uh, confirmed sympathetically, humanely, kindly, gently explained to me that the DNA test had confirmed that the body they found was my father. Julian's body was found in the bathtub with his rescue dog, Jack. Phil thinks the fire came too quick and too fast before his father could get out. January 1st of this year, I decided I was no longer going to mourn my father. When I think of my father now, I think of his accomplishments. Julian was the youngest of seven children. He was wise beyond his years. Valedictorian, he graduated from Harvard on full scholarship and retired as one of the VPs for Warner Brothers. He was simply amazing. Um, we miss dad. You know, there are moments when I think to myself, oh, I wonder what this word means. I want to call dad. And I realized there's no one to call. Um, Phil is not alone. There are so many other families going through the same loss. It's hard to comprehend. The names take up these crosses. I want people to know that it's not personal. The fire wasn't personal. It took victims as it took them. The grief is not a single emotion. It's a combination of emotions. Loss, sadness, fear, anger in some cases. And one year later, Phil is looking away from the pain to the memories of his father. All that's left from his time in paradise. It's, gonna, it's not going to be an easy day. You know, I'm trying not to mourn my dad, but, you know, much as I keep telling myself, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mourn him and I'm going to just rejoice in the good things, the pain is still there. So I would just tell whoever's lost somebody up here, Go do something to celebrate that person.